at kindergarten this week in math we're going to learn more about word problems and ways that we can solve them so this is a little bit harder of a skill because we're incorporating reading and math and we're also trying to find the order of operations but you've learned two so far in kindergarten you've learned about addition and you've also learned about subtraction so let's review before we even get into any of these word problems let's review about what we know about addition some things that we've learned and talked about in school in an addition sentence we know that you need to use the plus sign and the equal sign. So the plus sign, boys and girls, right? It looks like this. You know that when you're adding, you're joining groups together, okay? And the way that we do this is we might have two add-ends, right? Two numbers that go before and after the um, addition sign. And we're joining those numbers together. And the, how we're solving them is by counting on. We've learned that strategy by circling the bigger number and then counting on how many um, more we have on the other add-in to find the sum. And the sum is known as the answer in an addition sentence, okay? So remember some things that we've learned in an addition sentence, you're joining groups together and you wanna also find the sum by joining these groups together after the equal sign, you know comes the answer. And the equal sign and the plus sign are signs that you use in an addition sentence. And those two numbers that come in between the addition sign are called the add-ends, okay? Uh, we've also talked about subtraction, which in a subtraction sentence, you need to use a different kind of a sign. You're not gonna use the plus sign. You're gonna use what's called the minus sign. And the minus sign is telling us, boys and girls, that we need to take away. We're not joining, we're doing the opposite. We're taking away something. We still have to use the equal sign because in both of these equations, we're solving, okay? So after the equal sign, you wanna write that special number, which is known as the answer, and it's also called the difference, okay? In an addition, sentence, the answer is known as the sum, but in a subtraction sentence, remember, that answer is known as the difference, okay? So let's talk about a few of these word problems. I'm going to slowly read, and um, you're going to see that I highlighted different information because that's what's important in the sentence. That's what I like to do. Um, after I read a word problem, I want to go back and highlight what's important. What do I really need to find out? And, you know, different ways that we can solve these word problems are by using different strategies, such as drawing a picture. We can use a number line. We can use our 10 frame. So you're going to get your own little word problem booklet. And again, if your parents can't print, it's totally okay to just keep these uh, word problems in a copy book or a special, um, another, you know, sheet of paper. But you're going to see that all of them have a little word problem to solve. And you're going to see different strategies that you can use. They're going to want you to draw a picture. They're going to want you to use the 10 frame. They're also going to um, have this little box down here, which is the square boxes are where you write the numbers. The circle sign here, that's where you put either the addition or subtraction sign. And the equal sign, you know that will be the answer, okay? You're also going to see a number line down here. And then it gives you the steps. You're going to first read. You're going to draw a picture. You're going to write it out by using counters like we did in school, which I'll show you to review that. And then you're going to solve, okay? So this is how you show your work. You don't just want to give an answer in a word problem. You want to take your time, read carefully, and show your work. All right, so let's do that together, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is read this word problem, okay? And you're going to see that the little green lines are where I um, think that's the most important information that the word problem wants us to find out, all right? So I'm going to read it through twice, and you're going to try to just read along with me, okay? So here I go. There were seven cows eating grass. Three more cows came to eat grass. How many cows are eating grass all together? Okay, notice the words I underlined. Okay, some phrases and some words. I'm going to read it back to you and I want you to pay close attention to what do we need to find out? What do we need to solve? All right, there were seven cows eating grass. Three more cows came to eat grass. How many cows are eating grass all together? together. All right, so I'm going to read back just the important parts that uh, I felt 
that's what we needed to find out. So first we know seven cows, right? Seven cows are here, they're eating grass. But I underli underlined that, seven cows. Then I underlined this phrase, three more cows, because that's something else we learned by reading the information. We started with seven, but three more cows came to eat the grass. Then I underlined this important phrase, these words, all together. Those words, boys and girls, tell me something. When we want to put something all together, what do you think I need to do? Do I need to add or do I need to subtract? Think about those two words. If I want to bring these two groups all together, all together means, I think you know, good, you're going to have to add. You're going to bring them together by adding them. All right, so let me put this down and I want to go to this part. Now, this is the strategies that you can use. But before we go and do that, I want to recall that information so we know that there are seven cows. So the first thing it wants you to do is kind of draw a picture. I'm going to try to do that the best that I can here for you. I'm not going to get too hung up on the picture or the drawing. Like, you know, I know in school sometimes I just said, when you draw a picture for a word problem, you don't have to make it super detailed. You can even just use basic shapes or, um, you know, lines to represent the cow. So don't get too hung up on drawing. It's just kind of to give you that information. In this story, I'm going to represent the cows by drawing like a little oval. All right, I'm not even going to draw their legs or their tail. I'm just going to draw a little oval so I can take you through this process. Remember, how many cows did we start out with? We started out with seven. All right, so I'm going to do that now and I'm going to do my best to just draw an oval. All right, but I'm going to draw seven. I drew them small enough because I want it to fit down below. Okay, now you guys are going to have your own separate box to work in. So you'll have room to do, you know, a bigger picture if you want. Remember, I'm not going to get hung up. I'm not going to add all these details. I don't even have to draw the grass. I'm just going to represent the seven cows. And I did that by drawing ovals. Let's count to double check though. Do I have seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Do you remember the other piece of information? How many more cows came to eat the grass? You didn't know. You can see that underlined freeze there. Three more, three more cows came. So I'm only gonna add three more. Now I'm gonna draw a separate group. So I'm gonna leave a space. My second group has three more cows. So I'm gonna draw ovals again. Okay, now there is my little picture. There's seven cows here and in this group I drew three. So now in my 10 frame, I want to represent those cows, all right? And I'm going to just pick two different colors. If you remember in school, we had counters that were red and um, yellow counters that we used to represent the groups. But in my case, I'm just going to use black and green, all right? And it doesn't have to be, again, something to get hung up on. You could just pick any two crayons. But remember, make one color represent the first group. Make the second color to represent the second group, all right? So in this 10 frame, I always start at the top left just like we read from left to right the way we use counters we go from left to right and then when that's all filled in then i start here again left to right this is called a 10 frame right it represents numbers so i'm going to use that to help me solve my word problem since there's seven cows in the first group i'm going to go ahead and record seven counters to represent them so you're going to see how i take those counters i fill each box with a counter and i'm only going to draw seven all right and remember what we said we go from left to right and then we go down to the second frame right and then i filled in only two more because i have five one two three four five and two more make seven all right so i know that now in the second group i know that i have to draw three more cows because that was the second group that came i'm going to use green remember in my 10 frame all right all right, so now we're getting closer to solving this together. Here it comes, guys. Three more, right, in the second group. Whoa, wait a minute. We already know what our answer could be just by looking at this 10 frame. How many counters should be in this 10 frame if they're all filled up? A 10 frame. 10 frame. It tells you the answer. 10 frame, there should be 10 counters. If you have them all filled in, you know automatically this represents 10. All right, but let's figure out how we got that answer. We don't just want to say, oh, it's 10. We want to solve it. Okay, so the next thing they're going to tell you to do is try to use the number line. Now, remember, let's start with the bigger number. We have seven and then we have three. Whisper to me, which one is the bigger number, seven or three? 
You guys are so good. You know, seven's bigger, right? So I want to find seven on my number line. I'm just going to underline it, okay? Because seven is the bigger number out of those two numbers. Seven's more than three. There it goes right here. I'm using green. I underline that number seven. So now here's seven, and I'm going to write that number seven because that represented that group, right? We know that we're adding because we're joining these two groups together. Remember that information? It says how many cows are eating that grass all together. We're joining. So here's the plus sign. The plus sign is here, right? All right, and then now I'm gonna add the second group, which we already know is three. And then we're gonna do our equal sign. So now here it is from left to right, seven plus three equals don't tell me yet. Let's do it and solve it on our number line. We underline seven. How many more hops do we need to take? How many do we need to add? We have seven. How many more cows came to eat that grass? Three more. So watch what we do on this number line. Here's seven. We're going to take three hops forward. And you can actually draw these on your number line. So I start here at seven. One hop, two hops, three hops and one hop is one number over. You go forward because you're counting on. Those numbers are getting bigger because you're joining those groups together. Seven is the number of cows that we started with. I counted one, two, three hops. And what is my answer? 10, awesome guys. The answer or the sum is 10, great job. So as you're doing these word problems and you see different words like all together or how many do you have in all, you know that you're gonna have to add or use your addition sign and you always wanna solve by putting that equal sign down to solve your sum. Go ahead and use your 10 frame. Go ahead and use your number line. All right guys, have fun.